How does that thing work? Well, you're looking at a drawbridge, one of five on the MBTA commuter rail's entire system. In episode two of Infrastructure on the MBTA, we will be looking at a historic drawbridge in America's oldest fishing port. Welcome to the Gloucester Draw. It's August 23rd, 2023, and I'm set up by the Gloucester Marina. Looking at the geography around us, in front of me is the mighty Anasquam River, which splits Cape Ann from the mainland. In the summertime, the Anasquam is a very busy boating route, as it connects Gloucester Harbor in the Atlantic Ocean to Ipswich Bay on the north. The Gloucester Drawbridge, originally built in 1911, was a bascule drawbridge with one span carrying two tracks. The infrastructure on the bridge slowly deteriorated as time went on, and in 2017, 105 years after it was built, reconstruction efforts began. Trains continued running as workers made small structural fixes to the span. However, in April of 2020, a major structural defect was found and the bridge was closed to all rail traffic indefinitely. At this point, the MBTA began running shuttle buses from West Gloucester to Rockport to make up for the loss of commuter rail service. For the next two years, the MBTA built a brand new drawbridge that opened in May of 2022. So, the bridge you are seeing is a fresh one year old at this time extremely young compared to the other drawbridges on the system, which you will see individual episodes on in the future. Looking around here, you can tell that the Anasquam River and Jones Marsh are major marine ecosystems. Birds, fish, crabs, and other creatures can be found all over hiding in the marsh grass, just like this egret searching for a mid-afternoon snack. It's just about 4.30 now, and the drawbridge tender in the tower begins lowering the span, with about 15 minutes of padding before the next train. Unlike the original bridge, this one has two individual bascule spans capable of working in unison or individually. What makes this good is if one of them breaks, they have another they can still use. Train. Okay. Yeah. As I stood on my perch, I was approached by a nice man who offered his dock to me as a place to get a closer vantage point of the bridge. I gladly accepted his invitation and began my trek. This will be quite the Boston by adventure. Do I do it? With the camera, through the water, it is a high, high tide right now. Doesn't seem like there's anywhere that isn't wet. Let's go. The things I do for Boston by rails, my friends. I hope you enjoy these. <laughs> I love this channel and I love it more than my shoes. So I think this is definitely worth it. it feels really nice too, it's a really warm day. The schedulers over at Keolis intentionally scheduled their trains to meet at West Gloucester 
to allow for less of a disruption for boat traffic. This way, the drawbridge tender can keep the bridge down for a total of 15 to 20 minutes for both the inbound and the outbound, instead of two separate 15 minute time slots for each direction. However, this does cause quite the boat traffic jam. Boats as rustic as lobster boats, or as fancy as yachts, even as small as kayaks, all have to wait their turn at Gloucester Draw. That's just the way it goes around here. Each one of these boats, except for ones that can fit under the bridge without it lifting, must communicate in advance to the tender. Here comes train 115, about 15 minutes after the last train, 118. Though you can't see it in the video, 115 has now entered single track territory at what is known as CP Wilson. This is the only single track portion of the entire Gloucester branch, and it extends all the way east to CP Loop by Rockport Station. Finally, with 115 out of the way, the drawbridge tender lifts up the span, and the boat traffic proceeds through the bridge. Forty minutes later, 120, 115's counterpart, is the next train to close up the bridge. Just like the last train, the closing process began about 15 minutes before the train's arrival. Here comes 120, with a now retired CTC 1B cab car leading towards Boston. is scheduled to meet train 117 near West Gloucester, so once again, the tender keeps the spans down until 117's clearing. Speeds out here on the Gloucester drawbridge have improved dramatically since rebuilding. For years, trains were limited to as slow as 10 miles an hour over the old bridge. Now, trains can go as fast as 45 miles an hour. 117 is one of three outbounds in the p.m. hours that puts away in Rockport Yard for the night. Marking the end of rush hour for the Gloucester draw, 117's passing means the beginning of more time between trains.
117 set will cross the Gloucester drawbridge on train 104 tomorrow morning, when boat traffic is even more busy. Maybe I'll make another video and cover that. But until then, I will see you all again soon, out there on the rails.